Sombra's rework has finally been revealed, and she has become way more damage heavy as well as fluid with her new stealth passive. Let's get right into what's changed and what stayed the same. Her stealth ability has been moved to her passive, meaning that you no longer decide when to enter your stealth, but when you've been out of combat for enough time, it activates automatically. Because you can do all of your hacking and translocating in your invisible form, this should make things a lot more streamlined when you're out of the fight. All you have to do is teleport away, put your translocator down, and get back in the fight. Sombra's stealth ability is pretty important to her kit, allowing her to get behind the enemy undetected to apply her hack and focus fire, so it's definitely a nice change even though it gives less autonomy to the player. As the player, you can still wait and get ready for the stealth to activate, but you definitely can't press a button to start going off. This is definitely a net buff for the stealth ability, since you won't have as long of a cooldown to get into your stealth form, and if you get knocked out of it, you'll be able to get back into it really quickly. You'll be able to do this because Sombra won't always have to wait the maximum time for a stealth passive to kick in, since now, using your translocator to teleport reduces the passive cooldown of your stealth. For example, if you shoot, then wait until your stealth kicks in, that will take longer than if you shoot, then teleport to your translocator, and then wait until your stealth kicks in. The waiting time will be much lower if you translocate. So not only does your stealth ability have an automatic activation and a much lower cooldown, but when you end your engage, your invisibility will trigger that much faster, meaning you can get back into the fight way earlier than you could before. This is really critical for times when you are shot out of your invisibility, since when that happened before this rework, you would have to wait for your stealth ability to come back online before coming back in, and that could be up to 6 seconds. And because of the speed of your stealth, every second counts for getting back behind the enemy team again. Her stealth ability has definitely been improved although you'll have to get used to not pressing shift every time you translocate, since that's not going to shoot out Sombra's new ability, the Virus. Sombra's Virus is a projectile that can hit one player and will deal damage over time. It can be blocked by shields and eaten by Matrix abilities, so it's nowhere near unblockable, but because of Sombra's massive setup, you'll often be able to hit the ability and get the damage over time on your target because you'll be behind where no one's looking at you. As Sombra, your engage can be seriously bolstered by throwing out your Virus, then hacking your target, and then looking to finish them off with your machine gun. Since now, your primary fire isn't the only thing that's damage boosted on the hack targets. This new virus is as well. Because the virus does damage over time, it basically does a small amount of damage in very quick ticks. Not only is the virus damage doubled, as in the tick damage is more, but it ticks more often as well against hack targets. You definitely don't want to be using your virus on non-hack targets. It's really important to get that damage boost activated, since it more than doubles your damage. Applying the hack first may be strong as well, but ideally you want to surprise your enemies and do as many things at once. And because the projectile doesn't move at light speed, you can throw it out, then start your hack, since the virus throwing animation doesn't lock you out for very long. If you hack first, you'll be spending precious time of the ability lockout duration. The ideal way to play Sombra is to kill them before they even get their abilities back. If your virus is already on your target and then your target becomes hacked, the damage boost effect will activate immediately, leading to an insane amount of instant damage burst. This virus ability is really strong for focusing down one target, which is Sombra's specialty, but because it can be blocked by shields and matrix abilities, it has some counterplay to it. Heroes with shields will be more suited to deal with Sombra, since now they can block both her hack and her virus with the same ability. She has a crazy amount of burst damage potential now, which will make her all the more better for killing supports in an instant without requiring the most insane of aim. However, it also means you can put crazy burst damage into tanks as well, so make sure to take crazy caution to dodge or shield off the virus to avoid getting bursted down in record time. This virus ability is definitely super strong, but you don't always have to use it, since her normal hack and shoot engage is still the same. It hasn't been nerfed to force people to use the virus, it's still the same and still pretty good. There are no other changes to Sombra whatsoever. Her machine pistol, her hack, and her EMP are all the same. However, there's a lot more interactions you can do with the new virus. Sombra's EMP in Overwatch 2 has always been better for focusing one person down because of the low lockout duration. Now with the virus to add extra confirmed damage, it's going to be even better for one-shotting someone in an instant. When you EMP someone and deal them 40% damage, the virus will immediately start ticking down really hard. And then, all you have to do is hit a couple more shots to finish off your target. When playing with the Sombra, either as the Sombra or dive heroes with her, you'll be able to go in really aggressive for those EMPs and look for more kills than just one now. In higher ranks and against characters like Baptiste and Kiriko who have great abilities to deal with the EMP, you used to only be able to get one kill. But now Sombra can easily focus one person down with the virus and the EMP and then turn her gun on someone else. If you have a Winston, Doomfist, or a Genji, you can easily shoot both of these targets at once using your dash, your cleave, or Doomfist slam. In fact, supports that play together trying to stay alive together are now more likely to die together. Sombra has definitely been buffed, and despite Blizzard saying she'll be more interactive to play both as and against, she's basically the exact same to play against, except she now has a potential one-shot ability, since the virus damage is really hefty. 
poking her out of her invis through spy checking, which heroes like Diva are the best at, spamming chokes and alleys to stop the summer from going in, isn't even going to keep her out of the fight for too long. Because of her new stealth passive combined with her new translocator effect to benefit quick re-entry into the stealth phase. She's definitely going to be a bit of a monster, but we have yet to see the rest of the tuning changes coming in Season 7. So we'll have to see how she fares when compared to the buffs or nerfs to her counters or other dive heroes with synergy. There are lots of other heroes that will be changed in Season 7 at the very start, not to mention Roadhog with a similar rework one month into the season in November. For the tanks, Orisa, Ramatra, and Wrecking Ball will be changed. Orisa's Fortify will be reverted again, most likely to 40% damage reduction. But Ramatra and Wrecking Ball will definitely be receiving some form of buff. Ramatra only having received some quality of life changes for the past couple seasons, and Wrecking Ball only with a small reload change to help him frontline better but that's really not what he's good at doing anyway. With Wrecking Ball changes, we could see him help Sombra teams engage, since with flexible and patient play, Sombra doesn't counter him too hard, unless she plays more defensive, which isn't ideal for her. Either way, Sombra wins, since she still has a good matchup with or against Ball, so if he's stronger, she'll benefit no matter what. In the damage category, both Cassidy and Torbjorn are being changed, but fortunately for Sombra, Torb will likely be receiving a fire rate nerf, as stated before in the developer blog. Cassidy, however, has his hindering grenade, which isn't always a popular response to Sombra, but is definitely a hard counter, stopping her from from translocating away entirely. If he's got just a bit more power, since he currently still has 225 HP, he'll definitely be able to keep Summer from being too strong, and might even be meta himself. Brigitte and Ilyari are also being adjusted, and since Brig hasn't seen too much play outside of the end of the Overwatch League playoffs, which Blizzard have definitely not taken into account for these changes, she'll likely get a buff. But to what? We can't say yet. The same goes for Ilyari's changes, since she's also been nerfed slightly and still have been hovering in a good spot. And finally, big map changes are coming to Season 7. Route 66 is adjusting almost the entire map, for both defenders and attackers. Attackers should find it easier to exit their spawn, with extra cover to help them get the cart out of the valley of death that is first point. On second point, the gates that open won't close entirely after capture, meaning the attackers now have an extra place to push from, making it harder for defenders to fully spam them out. This makes for 5 total ways to rotate for the attackers, and even though some of them are more difficult than others, it's a lot of options that make things a lot easier. But luckily, the defending team on third point will also be getting some help, since cover on the attacking side of the inside of third will be removed, freeing up sightlines to prevent them from taking their left side of the map with the moving platforms, which was definitely overwhelmingly in favor of attackers. And of course, Samoa is going to be released. So if you haven't checked it out yet, make sure to look at our recent video going over all of the objectives in detail, so you can be prepared for it when it comes out. That's it for all the Season 7 news we have so far, but more is sure to come. Make sure to keep an eye on this channel for more, and thanks for watching.